There are all kinds of advocacy groups out there for businesses, for labor unions, for even animals, uh, and a variety of other uh, different types of groups that come together uh, to advocate for things. But what about advocating for child well-being? Uh, joining us right now from the Courts Appointed Special Advocacy Program, he's the marketing director for CASA. John Schiller joins us. Uh, John, thanks for taking time with us. Uh, talk about uh, what CASA is and why it's so important, uh, especially in Sangamon County. Good morning. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, CASA, it, we are a national program. Our, we're court-appointed special advocates. We are a volunteer program for children in foster care system for abused and neglected children. Um, we work, again, just like it says, advocate. We advocate. We give the children a voice. We are the group that goes out and makes sure their basic rights are being met, that they are receiving what they're supposed to, um, that the foster parents, uh, child welfare specialists, social workers, everyone are get, making sure their education, their health care needs, that they, they have a roof over their heads, that, again, their basic needs are being met and, and seen. We uh, relay to the courts, to the judges, um, what is happening in their lives, and and we look out for the kids. So is CASA a government organization? Is it through the, the county government, or how's the uh, structure there? Generally, CASA is a non-for-profit. And um, in Sangamon County, we're a little different. Um, we are under the, under the county, um, although all our volunteers are, well, volunteers. Um, but, but yeah. Sangamon County is a different bird sure. um, just because we are under the county employees. Um, but yeah, generally throughout throughout the U.S., uh, it is nonprofit. So there are some resources there uh, that uh, allow for CASA to operate here in Sangamon County. But you guys, as you mentioned, you need volunteers. Yes. Uh, and that's a major issue that uh, you're looking to, to raise awareness about. Um, before we tell people how they can go about volunteering for CASA to be a child advocate, um, I guess just tell us uh, what, what people need to know about being a volunteer. Well, right now, um, I think as of a week or two ago, there's 561 children in the foster care system in Sangamon County alone. Uh, we serve about 200 of them. Realistically, every child needs an advocate. Every child needs their voice heard because a lot of times they're not. Um, a child coming in, a 7, 8, 9, 12-year-old, you name it, they have everyone that comes in and speaks for them, but a lot of times they don't get to speak for themselves. And that's what we do. We get to tell their story. We get to go to the judge is here in town and say, this is this is what's going on and what the child wants you to know. We're talking with uh, John Scheller. He is the marketing director for CASA, which is the court appointed special advocacies uh, group here in Sangamon County. Uh, they definitely need volunteers. John, how can people volunteer if they're interested in this? Well, you can get onto our website, uh, casaofsangamoncounty.org, or you can call our office at 217-321-2713 or my cell phone if you would like to text uh it's 217-622 3172. And that's my personal cell phone. That's 622-3172. And we'll give uh, some more of that contact information out here in a bit. Uh, you got an event coming up? Is that right? Uh, <laughs> tell got, us about that. We got a couple. So fr this is April is Child Abuse Awareness Month. Friday night, we do have a trivia night um, at the KC Hall on the west side of town. And then actually tonight, uh, we have one of our quarterly classes start for training classes starting if um is it too late for people to get involved in it that? is not if they would like give me a call on my cell phone um contact our office and i will happily sit down and i'll talk with them today if they would like to start uh training to become a volunteer john how did you personally get involved in in this program uh well myself that's sort of a unique story well i guess not unique but um I was not in child welfare. I was not in social work. Um, it Once I hit 30, uh, my wife and I, we had our third child. The the gentleman I was working for, uh, he passed away. I was in sales and IT. And so we were at a point that with him passing, we closed the business down. My wife asked me, you know, well, what would you like to do? 
And I wanted, after having three kids, 14 nieces and nephews, I wanted to work with kids. Um, so we decided, I, you know, I wanted, <laughs> and working with kids, getting into social work, I didn't have the background for it, but I got into it. Um, I ended up loving it. Um, it was a lot, and my after years of doing that, we talked, and it, it was well, if I got out of it, because with three kids working the hours that it was, it was difficult, I would still volunteer at CASA. Well, when the job opportunity came up, my wife's like, why don't you work there? I was like, that is perfect for me. So I would volunteer there. I am a volunteer. Um, and that's where I ended up going. John, uh, obviously, there's uh, a lot of dire situations that uh, children who need these types of advocates uh, find themselves in. Uh, and I would imagine that the stories are heart wrenching at times. Yeah. Uh, I guess could kind of give us an idea of, um, you know, the types of things that uh, volunteers are going to run into if indeed they do uh, you know, take this this position in a volunteer capacity. That I don't know if I can put that in a nutshell, to be honest. That is, there's at so many different things. Um, I think a better one would be my first experience with the CASA volunteer. Sure. Um, and I think I can say it a little quicker, to be honest. Uh, it was when I first became a caseworker. Uh, I didn't even know what CASA was at that time. Um, I was new to the system myself, but one of my, one of my kids, um, I asked him what he wanted, ultimately what he wanted, and he told me, you know, I'll never forget, I'm 14, I'm fat, I have behavior issues, I want adopted, but I know that's not going to happen. He had bounced around from county to county, caseworker to caseworker, counselor to counselor, school to school, foster parent to foster parent. He wasn't wrong. At 14 year old with behavioral issues, getting adopted is a very difficult feat in itself in the system with the amount of foster parents and people willing to adopt alone. Um, because of his CASA volunteer, he had been in the system five years at that point. Um, paperwork was lost all across the board. Um, but because of his CASA volunteer, they were able to help me find a, find a friend and a, a family friend that was open to taking him in and an adoption. So that was my first run in with a CASA volunteer and experience. And that's when I fell in love with the system. I would imagine, uh, as I said, there are heart wrenching stories. There are gut punching stories, things that uh, just a, an average person uh, can't even you know understand uh, how these things play out. But again, I, I also think on the flip side of that, there's also a, a huge reward when you find placement for these kids and you're seeing them thrive thereafter. And that's something that uh, uh, I imagine these uh, these volunteers experience uh, day Absolutely. after day. Uh, John Scheller, he is the marketing director for CASA. That's a court-appointed special advocacy. And uh, give us, again, uh, the, the contact information for, for people who want to volunteer. Uh, but also tell us about uh, the upcoming events, including the one tonight. All right. Again, my number is 217-622-3172. I'm so passionate about it. I'll give out my personal cell phone. Um, and then tonight, we do have a training class starting to become volunteers. And a uh, trivia night coming up. Friday night at the KC Hall. Friday night at the KC Hall, helping raise those funds for CASA here in Sangamon County. John Scheller, he is the uh, marketing director for CASA. Greatly appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. It is Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 W.